besides sending the police, you might want to send an ambulance or a hearse. Hello, Billy Ho here. And we are going to do the DraftKings portion of this week's AT&T Byron Nelson Championship. Uh, welcome to the channel. Appreciate you hanging out. Make sure you do one thing for me. If you don't already uh, know, subscribe to the channel, smash the like button. Uh, no article this week, but I am starting to build the article for the PGA Championship. So I will probably put that in the description of this video a little bit later on in the week and then or post it in the comments or something and then maybe you can get it to jump on the pga championship i thought i'd rather do it that way uh so it would be you know a little more smoother transition and uh, a little bit better and more useful information for a bigger tournament so appreciate you hanging in there with that discord's always out there if you want to join uh, the Byron Nelson contest is live. I'm not sure how many spots are left, but it might just fill up this week. So make sure you get a uh, get into that for me. And uh, I hope I'm hoping to have David on here in just a little bit. So we're uh, we're going to get started in just a second. And uh, we are at TPC Craig's Ranch. Uh, if you don't already know, if you've been on a rock, Jordan Spieth withdrew with a wrist injury. That sounds like it may somehow affect uh, PGA next week. So that's kind of disappointing. But that really, really leaves us hamstrung. So before we get David on here, we're going to take a look at some ownership. So let's go. All righty then. We are on the uh, Rick Run Good cheat sheet and uh, appreciate Rick hooking this up for us. Um, great uh, content as always uh, by Rick. But you can see without uh, Jordan Speed in here, just a quick look at some early projections. Scotty Scheffler, obviously above and beyond. He's almost 12K. It's like they knocked that. It's so easy. Like the, the, $8,900 golfer doesn't look as bad as the 9K golfer. So they thought if we put Scotty at 11.9, he won't look bad at 12K, like 12. Like he should have been probably 12.2, uh, but that's okay. He's 30% is light. I, I expect that to change. I expect it to rise. Although since Terrell Hatton, uh, he's about 27, he's going to jump, obviously. But it's such a big discount, you know, $1,800 cheaper uh, to go with Terrell Hatton. Uh, but I mean, a, a, a true winner like Scotty Shuffler, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to have a hard time, uh, going, going there on either one of them, but then you got, you know, you can take a look at, you got Hideki who's coming off of the masters, uh, at 15%. Most of the other ownership, Jason Day is going to be up there. Cause he's, uh, he's obviously been playing very well. He missed the cut last week, but you know, you have KH Lee, the defending champions, obviously super chalky. So if you know, if you want to take a shot at fading that, uh, I, I'm not mad at you because uh, it, it could even be higher percentage. Because I, I mean, I would just assume on, honestly play Adam Scott or Siwoo, either one of these guys. Uh, I don't know. You know, Adam Scott is a uh, Aussie. He had a 30 uh, second finish last year. So if we look over here at the the combis uh, stats on these guys, and it is going to be yeah thirty second last year. The uh, KH is rounding into form, so you know I, it's going to be a tough fade. But like a guy like Kucher at nine thousand, if you go back over here, uh, he's going to be thirteen percent, probably thirteen to fifteen. This could be the type of tournament that Kucher could win, in my opinion. Uh, so, anyway, uh, just uh, wanted to – but that those are the only real big ownership uh, things that we got going on. And, Dave, you know, when I get David on here, we'll we'll probably talk a little more about it. Uh, I just wanted to, to get that news out there. I, I didn't really check to see if there was any more withdrawals, and there might be some. Uh, but then you got further down here, you got S.H. Kim – who I think might be a little highly owned for being such a grinder, but he is a good, he's a good, uh, good player. So you got SH Kim and Dylan Wu, uh, pretty much sucking up some ownership. Adam Shank coming off, uh, the new baby, 
Uh, I might have to look at fading that one. Harry Hall, I'm, I'm not playing Harry Hall at, at 12%. Uh, no thanks. But everybody else probably beyond that is going to be 5% owned or worse. So uh, I'm really, really going to be trying to do some deep, deep diving down here in these 6K areas uh, to go along with my strategy. So uh, that's where we, where we land so far. So uh, up next is David. All right, as promised, Billy Ho here with my man, DDFS Chef David. Uh, we finally got to hook up. Uh, schedule's been conflicting lately, but uh, we got the, the clutch stat model, and uh, we got a little bit of info here and there, and I've just been kind of cheating off of it here real quick. So we're uh, I'm going to throw it over to David here in a second uh, and have him. He's basically just going to tell you a little bit about what he's looking for this week and then uh tell us uh how you're gonna kind of maybe just your build strategy and, and what you're gonna do with these guys up top because i think we all know scotty scheffler is the play i mean or he is a play are we you know or do do you go all in on scotty uh my thinking was in these uh in these lower tiered events like the non-elevated ones where we don't only get uh three or two or three stars or, you know, at most four is to take a stand on, on a particular one or two stars and, and jam them up top and then just try to fit in whoever after that, just like football back in the day with, with uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, with the Le'Veon Bells and, and whatnot. So uh, uh, David, get us going, man. What, what do you got going on here? Yeah. I mean, it's good to be back after a few weeks, you know, thank, thank goodness for, DraftKings Sportsbook offering a profit boost last week and got uh, got a little Wyndham Clark at 82 and a half to one. So, oh, well done. So that was quite nice. I mean, that I took my, a couple. Yeah, I that took was a my one other guys. Yeah, I took a couple other guys as well, but I couldn't pass that up with the profit boost. So, you know, it was it was a good week with that because DFS wise, the last couple of weeks, eh, kind of been breaking even the last few weeks. But yeah, uh, yeah. same here I mean, with 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 speed withdrawing. I mean, it's kind of you know self-explanatory where where people are going and i mean you can see that off of projected ownership right now it, it's jason day it's scotty scheffler it's terrell hatton right now i mean from what i'm seeing on mm -hmm. rick's you know rick's uh website it's seeing showing jason day as of right now projected out as the highest at like almost 32 percent and then and then kicking the scotty at just a shade over 30 and then Terrell Hatton just under 27. So, I mean, in cash, you know, you can pretty much double those ownerships in cash on these guys. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, it just kind of depends on where you want to go. I mean, you can easily get Terrell Hatton and Jason Day in a build and then still have a fairly solid lineup. So, if oh, you want to Or Scotty, yeah. Well, I mean, Scotty's eighteen hundred more than Terrell Hatton, so I mean, the savings on Terrell Hatton at eighteen hundred will definitely, you know, elevate you with your, you know, with your last man in, or even your fifth and sixth man if you split split mm -hmm. that nine hundred dollars across the board. So, I mean, I, I completely understand if people want to fade Scotty in cash and then jam them in in all their GPP lineups if they wanted to. But I mean, you could you could definitely go Scotty and Day if you wanted to, and then fade Terrell Hatton mm -hmm. in cash. It's there's multiple ways of looking at it on what you want to do. Um, you know, I do think Tom Kim is a good setup for this course. So, I mean, when you're talking GPPs, if you want to try and get off of a lot of that highly projected ownership, I mean, Tom Kim is still projecting out pretty well. And then, of course, you know, KH Lee gets the huge bump in salary because of the back to back champion, you know, champions oh, yeah. here. Can, I mean, can he make it three straight here? You know, you know that most of these Koreans now live in Texas, so right. You know, here we are. Wait, right, Byron Nelson. 
Oh yeah, we're in the Dallas Fort Worth area, McKinney, exactly. Texas. Exactly. That's, that's why, why the Cowboy Star. Yeah, that's why that's why Spieth is really upset about not having to play. Oh yeah, yeah. Play he's here like Yeah, he's, he's like an AT and T ambassador too. So he's also yeah. kind of sponsorship. So he'll I mean, be around. You know, Hideki is sub 10K. You know, I, we always have Tyler, Tyler Tambolina always mentioning yep. the sub sub 10K Hideki, and he's a shade under 15, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of on the shelf. You know, Siwoo does live in Texas, but you see Siwoo's history here, not that great. So, yeah, I, I would probably feel safer going to KH Lee or Adam Scott over Siwoo or even saving that hundred dollars and going to Kucher. So, I mean, the nine K range and the, and the sub and the 10 K plus range, it, there, there's a lot of plays that you can go to this week and it's going to be, you know, making a stand. You're going to have to make a stand on, on who you're going to fade out. And, you know, again, in cash, if you wanted to go that hat and day build and then go down somewhere else, but in GPPs, I can fully, see myself fading a 32% owned Jason Day in GPPs and, and going with, you know, you know, saving, saving more than half of that to a guy like Matt Kuchar, who actually has better course history here than, than Jason Day. So, you know, that's kind of where I'm looking at right now. Um, you know, I only play a little bit of cash here and there when it comes to golf, yeah. mainly, ma mainly single entry double ups for, for golf. I'm mainly GPPs. So, I probably will be I'll probably be taking a stand and, and fully fading Jason Day this week. Yeah, I, I, I think uh I might be with you. I actually uh I don't know if you caught the, the preview video, but I had this dilemma and it's actually when information goes wrong or goes bad, in my opinion, is there's a couple of new Twitter accounts out there with some decent golf injury information. And I, it's one of them just literally called Golf Injury Report. And they start putting out uh, information. And some of it's good, some of it's bad. But overall, it was like it started throwing out all these articles about Jason Day and his vertigo issues going all the way back to the match play. And then that just had me on tilt because I had – I didn't have a lot of Jason Day, but I had like four out of 11 lineups or something with Jason Day. And so I just got worried that he would, you know, and I guess it's probably his past history got to me too. So I switched to Sam Burns, which they both ended up missing the cut ultimately, but I, I let something influence me that, that I probably shouldn't because Jason Day played okay. He was going to make the cut, and then he hit it in the water on 17 and made double bogey. So if he, he had not done that, I would have ate that mistake that I made. So I got bailed out a little bit, but getting back to what you were saying, uh, cash lineups are a thing of the past for me on this. It's just, it gets, it's getting too difficult because there's what was there? 32% six of sixes in cash last week, probably. And then, you know, you, you have to have a really, really good five of six to even get there. So, and that's doubling your money. So I'm not playing, I'm definitely not using a $5 double up. So if I wanted to play a whole bunch of, if I wanted to play $200 worth of head to heads or something, I, I can understand where somebody might get that because you can set it for no duplicate entries or set it for certain things, I guess, for head to heads. But I, I'm uh, just strictly GPP in it. Um, I'm starting to lean toward just all Scotty at the top. And then trying to figure it out. And I did do this, actually. I, I tried Scotty and Spieth, and it left you with like 6,700. And so you had to go all the way down to 6K to even get right with that. So with Spieth out, it makes it a little easier. Uh, so I could conceivably see going Scotty and then maybe one of these lower 9K guys, like Scotty Scott, Scotty Scott, you know, something like that. And then, then you can get into uh, – because to me, what we're looking at is uh, there is not going to be a lot of difference to me between some of these guys in the mid-sevens and lower sevens, and especially up here at eight. And, you know, we don't know what Aaron Wise is going to be. We, Min Woo, Woo Lee, I, I, I'm, I'm not impressed. He had a couple of good goes at it. Monty is struggling. 
uh, big time. He's missing cuts. Uh, Seamus went through a rough patch, but he seems to be rounding back into it. So, you know, you could probably go up big up top and then skip the entire 8K range and be comfortable and then get down into the 7K range was what I was looking at. But I, I like your Tom Kim call. Uh, I think he, he's starting to uh, figure it out again with a, with the good uh, Masters and Wells Fargo. And getting back to what I, uh, what I said in my preview video, this is exactly what Decky did last year. He played 14th at the Masters and then came in third here last year. So he had the same amount of time off. I don't know what the neck issues are, but I think he he definitely he'll he'll play. It it just uh, it depends on you know like he would withdraw if if he you know if it if the neck's not right and he needs another week. But I was trying to get to the custom model because I do like when Rick puts in the tee times. Uh, so you'll see a PM AM here. So Decky would be AM PM. So you got a better chance of him pulling out early. Uh, so just real quick on the weather, there is rain and wind in the forecast. Just nothing really set in stone just yet. Uh, so we're going to have to keep an eye on rain. But I, I also like the Kuchar uh, call because Kuchar's been solid. I mean, he was third at Valero. Uh, night, you know, gets through like he always does at Dell. He's got a great run of going on here. 19th at Heritage and even 23rd at Wells Fargo, which is might not be his best fit. So I would absolutely pivot to some Matt Kuchar. Uh, and then you got course history, uh, Seamus Power back to back, nice finishes here. So the, both of these guys are on my radar. Uh, and they're both sub 10. Well, no, Kuchar's about 13%, but Seamus is under 10 right now. So I, I could definitely get down with Seamus. Uh, in a birdie fest, I mean that that's that's what he lives for. So uh, just gonna polish off the eight Ks, and then I'll let you go uh, get into some more guys down here, Dave. Uh, Jaeger bombs, and I will be interested on your take on Aaron Wise because I think he could play well, uh, but he's been off for a long time and and was really struggling uh, with the mental health thing. And I love that you got Tom Hoagie second in your model because <laughs> I, I think I'm starting to uh, get on the, the TCU grad. And, and, and I don't I don't so much know. I did look up. There's a whole bunch of dudes in here with mm -hmm. Texas ties, like your Kramer Hickox and your Kyle Westmoreland's. And, you know, there's all kinds of dudes down there that, that either played college golf in Texas or live in Texas or something in Texas. Uh, right down here at the cutoff point, J.J. Spawn was real good to me. And we know how he gets down in Texas. So, you know, he, he's got some really good finishes. He missed the cut at Heritage. But uh, even course history here is pretty good. Back-to-back -back cuts made. I, I would live with a – I mean, that, that's got to be a better finish in, a, in, this, in this particular field. I play him over Hadwin all day. Uh, so, you know, there's a couple of lower-owned guys up here in the eights. But uh, what are you looking at in this range? Um, the AK, like, like, I mean, just like you said, the AK is, could be, could be, you know, a kind of a dead zone this week. So, I mean, looking it over, I mean, yeah, Seamus, Seamus had a solid finish last week. He's, he's played well here the last two years. Um, 8,900. I mean, yes, it's a weaker field, but 8,900 to me, at least seems a little, a little, a little pricey, a little pricey for me to go to Seamus. I'd rather go to Hoagie. I mean, obviously, Seamus has, you know, their the course history for the two of them is is close, you know, relatively close. Hoagie has missed the last two cuts. Um, I can I can forgive him probably for heritage. Um, the Masters obviously a tough a tough go for him. Mm -hmm. um, he is as long as he's got the irons dialed in because uh you know obviously this is going to be a second shot course the majority of all your second shots are coming from 200 plus this week and he is i think one of the best in the field when we talk long irons he is number one in the field still in strokes gained approach so i probably would feel safer going to hoagie than power this week um 
Minwu, probably a pass for me on Minwu this week, uh, just because he hasn't played this course. He's missed the last two cuts as well. Almost, almost identical to Hoagie, you know. It's uh, it's almost you can flip flop their, their two finishes. Aaron Wise, strong course history here at eighty three hundred. I mean, we haven't seen him, you know, what in a few weeks now. I think the Dell match play was the last yes. time we saw him. So I don't know if he was just deciding to take the time off. Was he battling an injury? I don't remember. Well, it was. Uh, uh, he literally called it a mental, like he he was having trouble with mentally, you know, where he needed to, to take the time off because uh, I guess his stress level, like what uh, Matt Wolf went through and yeah. what some other guys have gone through where it just the mental stress was getting to him. And uh, so, you know, maybe, uh, you know, he, he broke up with his girl or something. I don't know, but yeah. you know, just whatever depression or whatever problems he was having, he needed to get away from golf for a month. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe this time off has done him well. Good. Very well. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't mind, you know, giving him a shot. You know, he's yeah. not excess he's not excessively high. Nope. He's going to play. No. And, and right now, yeah, as you can see, as of right now, he's sub 2%. Yeah. So, so in a GPP, that's the perfect, you know, sub 2, sub 2% 2 guy, especially a guy that, you know, we talk about has winning upside. Um, has won here back in 2018. Yeah, different um, course, but still same area, yeah, you know. Uh, exactly. Bomb it off the tee and knock it on the green and make putts, you know. Yeah, so, I mean, at sub 2%, I'm willing to ride that train. And then, um, you know, J.J. Spawn is sneakily is, is a sneaky kind of long hitter. I probably, even though Hadwin's ranking out better in my model, I, I think I'd rather play Spawn this week than I would Hadwin. Um, yeah, I think so too. And then even Bazudenheit, you know, we always yeah. talk about we always talk about Bazudenheit in in like tournaments where bogey avoidance comes into play. That he's that kind of guy that just doesn't make too many mistakes. He'll sit there and par you to death. But at the same time, we have seen him go low. We've seen yeah. him go relatively low here. He had that uh, the twelfth place finish here last year. This is going to be a course where it's going to go low. It's going to be a scoring fest, you know. So. We're talking probably 25 to 28 under. As you can see, KH Lee last, uh, last year was 26. The year before that was 25. Yeah. Well, so, uh, just, just real quick, Dave, if you didn't catch it, uh, there is a par five, the, the super easy par five, number 12 hole. They changed they, it to a par five. Everybody was eagling. They've converted it to a par four, so they moved yep. it to a par 71. Yes. So I'm going to imagine that the score is going to be pushing closer to 20 under, but that's yeah. still for a par 71 to hit 21 or 20 under is a birdie fest. So it's still yeah. an easy course. Don't get it twisted, right? Okay, yeah, go ahead, exactly. brother. I mean, the one thing that concerns me concerns me with Bazidin Hoot is his par five scoring average, and that's yeah. that's something you really are going to be looking at this week. But at the same time, when you look at that. He's 113th in par five scoring average in this field. But when you look at it, I mean, he's at 4.73 scoring average. The guy right below him, Davis Riley, 4.68. So you're talking 0 0.05. But you can see there's almost almost 30 placement points separating between a 0 0.05. So par five scoring average, to me, as long as you're you know having a solid week, you can always mm -hmm. make birdies. It's something I got to look at. But. I can see myself going to Bazid yes. and Hoot this week in a few lineups. And that's oh, kind of where I'm at yeah. in the 8K range. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm probably at in the 8K range. And then we dip right down into the 7K range. And we mentioned Davis Riley. Ah, he's gotten some good finishes here. Recent form. I'm not, not very so good. sure about. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sitting on the fence with Davis Riley. I probably would prefer, even though – the course history well i mean it's not too much of a separation and he's he's grading out a lot better in my model than davis riley would be bramlett because of you know mm -hmm. he's got that length off the tee um which obviously will make his second shot a little bit you know a little shorter than some of these other guys um brandon Wu had a really solid finish in mexico i mean it was, if you double stack the Wu brothers in mexico i'm sure you did quite well um but to me 
I pro even though he's grading out better on my model, I probably prefer saving. I mean, it doesn't sound like much savings, but I probably would save this hundred dollars and go to Scott Stallings over Brandon Wu this week. Um, SH Kim, no course history here. Uh, I, I made the, the error last week in playing a good amount of SH Kim and he, and he missed the cut. So, yeah. I mean, that was something that, that, yeah. that cost me last week. Yeah. So I'd probably prefer going to uh, Justin Su over SH Kim this week, which again, it's the exact same price point, just grading out better my model. Um, no course history for Justin Su, but I, I, he's, he's riding, even though, even though heritage, he was almost last, he still made the cut. So he's, he's riding a good consecutive cut streak as of right now. So he's someone I'd be looking at and, you know, to, I'll just end it with the 75 and up the guy has seemed to have found something in his game. I mean, what's he have now? Something like six, six straight cuts, seven straight cuts. Michael Kim. Yeah. I don't I know what he's it. found, but he's found, he has found something. So he has. I, mean, I got to be looking at that recent form. I mean, of course, his course history, not so great, but I'm at this particular course. I'm probably am going more recent form than I am course history when it comes to, do, you know, when it comes yes. to tiebreakers, mm -hmm. I'll be looking more at recent form this week. I, I'm with you there, brother. Uh, yeah, I had to look back and I was like, you know, he didn't just pop up out of nowhere. Michael Kim is, like you said, he's been making cuts for a while now and he just, I, I don't know. He, but you can remember the, the Wyndham, I want to say, uh, where he would just, lit the field up he shot like 28 under to win the tournament uh and he was just could do no wrong and that kind of feels like where he's at now to me and uh he's not exactly short off the tee either he's he's got about 305 uh but the the but all the metrics are there the the approach game is there the putting is there that's what you want Right there, because you you need putting to win this tournament. You need to gain probably three to five strokes on the greens uh, if, if you want to be up there. So that's why Luke List is dead, and uh, Ben Griffin's been struggling too. So I'm I'm not so much on him, uh, but I, I like your Scott Stallings call. I, I wrote down pivot, but this whole little range here. From Bramlett Wu, Gordon Stallings, it's all very, very reasonable price or ownership wise. We'll check back tomorrow to see where we land, but I, I don't, I don't uh, have a problem playing any of these four guys. Will Gordon? I mean, they're all they they all have their own, uh, you know, like Bramlett and Gordon. Gordon are real long off the tee, and uh, you know they just they're kind of streaky putting, but they both are a lot better. You know, like Bramlett used to be a disaster on the greens, but he's having his best year putting, and that's the only reason why he's here. Is is and you know he he's kind of like uh, the reverse Wyndham Clark, where he was really good off the tee and on approach, but he sucked at putting. And Wyndham Clark has always been good off the tee and putting, but he finally found approach. So he's kind of like minor league Wyndham Clark, I guess, if you want to say that. But all these guys look good. Dylan Wu, I might continue to ride, even though he is the highest zone guy in this range. It's just that that ball striking is just – and the ball striking and putting. I mean, that is just the perfect formula. I mean, he almost reminds me a lot of his, – with his metrics is K.H. Lee. I mean, he's about the same distance off the tee, kind of accurate, uh, been playing very, very good golf. So if I mean if he if he's putting these metrics together, he could be a seventy four hundred dollar KH Lee, who who is basically the same, you know, in metrics wise. So I I, I don't mind doing that for ten percent less ownership and nineteen hundred less on the salary. So uh, and then my my other dude down here is Coley Cole, Eric Cole. I, I love I like playing this guy. He's got the same metrics too. Uh, really, really great on approach, solid putter. He just seems to get it done. I mean, he misses – He he's a lower-tiered event guy. So, you'll see his missed cuts will be like Wells Fargo 
which was the upper tier event. He kind of stepped into big boy land and didn't quite get it done. But uh, he has had some good finishes. He almost won Honda earlier this year. I had him. I, I used him that week, and it would have been uh, very nice. But then you got other guys down here. Obviously, Shank is uh, off the baby swag. He He's back in the mix. Uh, so I don't know his post baby swag bad because he's long off the tee and he's been putting it really well, but he was tearing shit up right before he, he, uh, actually, uh, bounced out to, to attend to the wife and the baby. Uh, but I, I don't understand why we wouldn't just play cam champ at, at half the ownership. Cause he, it, th- I, I equate this course to a lot to Mexico because yeah. it's wide open fairways. It's always the fairways, which are soft like the past Palum, the greens are slow because of the Texas wind and the wet, the weather is the only thing that's going to be different. And, and the greens obviously are bent grass and not past Palum, but uh, champ just shows up. Like he could win this event. He, he can just be absolute dog shit for like eight events in a row. And then he always does it like one week prior, you'll see him pop and then he wins an event. But I don't know if, uh, if that's any kind of sign or not. But you got other guys like Pat Gazire here who is nobody's going to play. Uh, he's a Texas kind of swagger guy. Uh, he plays well in Texas. Uh, and some of these, I'm not I'm not going with Harry Hall, I don't think. Nate Dog Lashley, uh, he's got some good history here. Uh, but get, I'm just going to go ahead and just finish it off, and then I'll let you hit the lower sevens and your, and your sub sevens. But what I think it's going to take this week is deep diving down here and figuring it out. And I've been looking at this for a day and a half. And just most everybody way down here at the bottom are just not uh, feasible plays. You you would roll the dice like on a dude, Sun Kang. I think he's one of those uh, Korean, uh, local Korean guys. Like he could, he possibly pop. Uh, feel my cracking, Logan. <laughs> I'm just looking at names here. There, there's just nobody here. And sometimes I'll look at Rick Run Good's projected points. And if I see somebody in the 60s, like your guy, Trevor Werbelo, who you've mentioned before, is a possible cut maker, you know. And then you, you know, there's a few other guys, uh, like Kadira has been showing some form and he's got good, he's got a good finish here. And uh, I believe 21. Uh, but right in here, uh, there's a couple of dudes I might be interested in. Vince Whaley would be one of them. He's got good history, but he got a back injury back in the fall. He has not played since – I think he WD'd from Houston. So we have not seen him since then, and that worries me. But he is big mm-hmm. off the tee. Uh, this is his kind of jam. Uh, but there's a there's some just some dudes in here. Chapel, I don't mind him. Um uh, Carson Young will probably be my most owned play in this range because uh, I just like riding him. And then there's a few uh, – Garrard's another guy that I like. Um, up here a little bit, Jimmy Walker is getting it done again. Uh, it's nice to see. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if I'll go there, but Palmer, Walker are just two dudes that that uh, that I can definitely get down with. So uh, just uh, bring us on home, Dave. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the guys that you mentioned already in that seven to seventy four hundred dollar range. Wu, Cole, um, Shank. Shank was my was my sneaky play last week, and he just missed the cut. I, I was really hoping he would make it through there because I I was I was using him in several builds, and he just missed, and it would have been a lot uh, a lot nicer weekend had he had he snuck in there. But uh, yeah, I mean, I could see riding Shank. Harry Hall is someone I'm kind of on the fence with, you know, he, he does, it's not, he's not the longest, but he's long enough and he's a very good putter. Again, like you mentioned, Mexico, he had that 10th place finish in Mexico. So I'm kind of looking at that as, as the, as the comparison, um, between the two, I probably, I mean, their ownership is almost identical, slightly more to Hall, but I, I might favor Lashley over Hall. And then uh, Vince Norman, you can see all those guys are like right there in that yeah. couple couple percentage points difference. So he might be someone I'm looking at in Norman. Um, Smotherman's all over the place. But again, 
solid finish in Mexico, made the cut here last year. So Smotherman might be someone I'm taking a chance with. Um, if you look at the second tab on my on my uh, yes. model, you'll see Lipsky's name popping up quite a bit in some of those you know key metrics that I always post on there. So Lipsky's someone I probably will be maybe looking at. Um, you know, still not haven't made builds yet, but a guy again who's showing sub two percent right now, definitely someone that you know could be a difference maker in possibly having you know someone that could you know win you a GPP if he has a solid week. And he had a decent finish here last year, so Lipsky could be someone I'm I'm possibly riding at sub two percent. Jimmy Walker, again, Jimmy Walker, you don't you don't picture jimmy walker being as long as he is but dude's long he hammers it off the tee he just could yeah. not hit a fairway to save his life exactly but here i don't think you know missing a fairway need is, it. That, is that dangerous anyway um and if i'm not mistaken jimmy walker is a texas boy he, um, is. he hasn't done well here the last few years but going back to 2018 he had that sixth place finish so he knows what to do here and he's riding a good streak right now with some solid finishes so something that i can look at going to jimmy walker um hmm. novak on the fence with novak probably leaning more toward fading him but i have used him uh you know several times over the last few weeks um and then going down sub 6k sub sub 7k um Garnett is someone I might consider, you know, again, Mexico, 33rd place mm -hmm. finish in Mexico. And then he's, he's made the cut here the last two years, including that 15th place uh, finish here last year. So Garnett might be someone I, I, I can consider. Uh, Gerard, maybe, but I don't think so. And then, you know, we continue going down. Um, like you mentioned, Carson Young. Obviously, he's probably going to be one of the more popular guys at sub 7K. I mean, 2% is not that big of a deal. But when you look at the ownership around him, you're talking sub one on a lot of the guys around him. So mm -hmm. somewhat popular, at least in that price range. And, uh, you know, yeah, I'm with you on Chapel. Chapel's, you know, a veteran. He, he's been showing some signs of life here and there. So I don't mind Chapel. Um there might be another, you know, a couple other guys, but definitely a few other guys that I got to more do a little bit more deep diving on and seeing if I actually will roster them or not. But those sub seven K guys that I mentioned would probably be the guys that I'm looking at. All right. Well, that's awesome, man. Uh, we, uh, I think we, we gave everybody uh, some food for thought and, you know, just, these are just guys to look into if you can help, if it helps you narrow down the field, then then uh, we've done what's necessary. I know there are a lot of names flying around, but there's reasons behind it. These type of events are hard to nail down because you don't know what what all these guys. They're they're just the most. This these are just the most volatile golfers. Uh, that's why they they don't. That's why they're not at East Lake every year is because they have a handful of top tens every year and maybe one or two chances to win a golf tournament. So this would be one of those weeks where they got a shot. So uh, I appreciate you joining me, Dave. And uh, until our next video, we will see you soon. Appreciate you watching.